We are live. We are live here in the Travel and Teach Abroad TEFL Heaven community and also on the TEFL Heaven Teach English Abroad page. So I'm just waiting for uh, one of my colleagues to share this video to the community page, the group. Once she's done that, sorry, uh, once she's done that, Danielle, <laughs> um, we'll... we'll We'll get started. So she's done it. So Danielle, uh, thank you so much for coming to this interview. How's things? Really good. Yeah, I'm in Hanoi, Vietnam, and love it here. Lots of fun. Um, so how long have you been teaching in Hanoi? Have you only been teaching in Hanoi? Just Hanoi, and not anywhere else in Vietnam, right? Yeah, just Hanoi, and I got here. Um, the end of October, and then I had like a little bit of a training period for my work, and then I started teaching beginning of November. So. Beginning of November, okay. So yeah. six months, six months yeah. in Hanoi, and I mean, what, you trained with us in Thailand, right? And then went straight to to Vietnam. So, I mean, tell us of your journey up to that point. Yeah. So, um, I had never. Before I did Temple Heaven, I went backpacking for a little bit, and um, I backpacked through Vietnam, and I like just loved Hanoi. It's kind of like it's a big it's a big city, but it's not like it's not as big as Bangkok or Ho Chi Minh. It's kind of it's a bit smaller, but there's a lot of culture, and I just really like the city. So I decided that I wanted to go back there to teach. And when I was traveling, um, when I was in Hanoi, I met a bunch of people who had friends that were teaching in Hanoi. And I'm sure there was like a ton of opportunities there. So I decided to go to Hanoi. And it's what, been is great. It, what is it that you like about Vietnam? Like in general, you said there's a few things that you really liked about it, but what, what are those things? So, well, Hanoi is like, it's a big city, but at the same time, it's like you can navigate your way really easily. Like to, compared to Thailand, I would say it's like almost like a Chiang Mai, but like bigger. And it, it can be crazy at times, definitely Hanoi. But um, it's like a really lively city. There's always something going on. Um, there's a really big expat group, which is nice. Like tons, tons of teachers. So I really like that. It's really easy to meet people. Vietnam in general, n not so much Hanoi because Hanoi is a city, but in general, Vietnam is so beautiful. Like um, I have Mondays off work. And so, you know, I can take like, a two hour train and go to Ning Bing, which is where um, King Kong was filmed. Ning so, Bing. Yeah. Beautiful. So there's wow. just like a lot of, there's a lot of things you can do and, you know, this place is so close that it's just super beautiful and stuff. So you said there's a, a large community of teachers in Hanoi. I mean, how do yeah. you get to, how, how do you get to meet these teachers? Is it just when you're out or, or is it part of your school or is there like, how do you get to meet these different people? So kind of like all of it. So um, how I met a lot of people personally was, because when I first got here, I was living in a hostel, so I really was just meeting travelers. But um, the company I work for, like at my, I work at a language center, and at my center, there's like 17, 18 teachers, and um, became really good friends with them pretty quickly because they're all around, you know, around the same age, doing the same type of thing, teaching abroad. So you have that in common with everyone. And then yeah, going out from you know, house roommates. I live with seven people, and right. most wow. People. So, I hope it's a big house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's quite big. It's like just tall. There's seven floors, but each floor is pretty small. It just goes up. So, did you, do you almost have a floor to yourself then? Seven floors, seven people. Yeah. yeah, I do. I have like a floor, a floor to myself, but it's each floor is like just the room. So it's like a really skinny house, but it's just like super tall. All right, okay. Well, <laughs> I mean, a lot, a lot of people who will be watching this video live and afterwards, 
uh, are interested in teaching English in Vietnam. And I guess if I was them, the questions that I would have for you would be like, how many teaching hours do you do? How difficult is it to um, to teach? Is it is it is it are the students more studious? Um, is there a lot more like responsibility put on you to make sure that uh, they're progressing? Like, what do you do as a teacher? Like, what what, what are some of the answers to those questions? Yeah. So in um, I, I don't really have anywhere else like in Asia to compare it to because this is the only place I taught, but. Um, so like my teaching hours, I work at an English center, so I don't work at a school. So I work every night, um, I have two days off a week, but I work from 5.30 to 8.45. And then weekends are when you know you have most of your hours because it's when kids aren't in school. So I do um, 18 hours a week. And that's pretty, that's like a pretty average, I'd say that's what most people at English centers work. And um, English centers I think is probably the most common place to work in Hanoi, like there's public schools as well and mm -hmm. private schools and stuff, but centers. And I, I really like it because, you know, it's nice, like you have your days free. So, you know, like I, I work at night and then, you know, after work I can go out if I want to. And then the next day I can, you know, like explore the city, walk around or just hang out and, it's nice. And the students, um, I don't have anything really to compare it to besides the states, but the students that I work with are pretty well behaved. And right. Good. Yeah. So you, have, so, so, so you pretty much have your whole days free and then a few hours of teaching in the evening. And then Saturdays yeah. and Sundays are like the, the longer ones. Um, yeah, Saturdays and Sundays are the hard days. I actually work for a language center in Thailand um, with a very similar schedule. And um, yeah, it's great to have your days free. It feels like you got a day off every day, right? Yeah, um, I love it so much. And then in the, then in the evenings you do, you do some work, and, but then you're still, you still have like most of your night free. Yeah, um, so it's fantastic. Yeah. What about you? How does that work Living out home? for you? Yeah, your salary um, to the are you are you making so, okay money there or? Yeah, I make like um, about fifteen hundred to sixteen hundred dollars a month, and um, li like housing costs here. My rent is um, three hundred and twenty five dollars a month, but that's like on the really really high end. So, like that seems quite expensive for Vietnam. Yeah, so. that's like most of my friends pay. 230, like 200, 230. One of my friends pays 150 and has a nice place. Um, I have utilities in, included in mine. I mean, that doesn't, utilities aren't that expensive anyway. But yeah, usually for a nice place, you can get around probably 230 bucks. Um, food is like, for like a good, a good nice meal, three or four bucks. And there's plenty of, there's plenty of Western restaurants and, and stuff like in Illinois. So it's like you can get any type of food you want. Anything anything really that you want, like like you're creating from home, you can get here. Okay, so you're doing about 18 hours. You're getting paid about $1,500 a month. And is that the salary you started on? And you've stayed on that salary? Like from when you just were trained yeah. and then started? Yeah, wow. it's like... You start on it, but I don't think you ever go up. It's just like that's it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, and how much can you realistically save then? Do you think? I mean, you may, maybe you spend I, uh, a I, lot, but. but I haven't really tried. I've traveled a bunch, like on breaks. Um, I guess you could save, like. Eight or nine hundred dollars a month. Wow. Probably, because yeah. yeah, I'm not a good person to ask. I'm just so bad at saving. <laughs> so. Well, but. actually, after Thailand, Vietnam is our most popular program. Um, like it's just grown and grown and grown. And I think because of the salary and because of the the lifestyle there, 
is getting more and more popular. And I'm sure a lot of people watching this video will be very happy to know that you can save, if you want to save, of course. Yeah, yeah you definitely can. I know or you people can. that are thinking, well, or you can do, or you can do what you're doing and have a great time yeah. spending the money. <laughs> yeah. well. Um. So I want to kind of go back a little bit, or kind of reverse, and just ask you a few questions about like how you your thought process before you went abroad, like, um, because a lot of people have fears and concerns about going abroad. You're kind of stepping into the unknown, really. Um, yeah. What were what were some of the fears and concerns that you had, and how did you overcome them? Well, um, so one of the things that I was probably most scared about, I had never been to Asia, and I didn't really, like, you know, know too much about it. But I was kind of afraid of, like, being in, like, a really, really small town where, you know, like, I there was maybe, like, one or two other English speakers and just, like, you know, not being able to make a lot of friends and being bored and stuff. So that was, like, one of my biggest fears. But then... I, I talked to, um, when I talked to Charlie in Temple Heaven, she said, you know, if you want to be in a, a city, you can, you can like be asked to be placed in a city. And yeah. when you're in a city, that's not really a worry because you know that there's lots of other people there. Um, and, you know, kind of once I came out here, I realized just, just through the traveling before I did the course, I realized, you know, how many expats and, and Westerners are living in these countries and you know how how easy it is to meet people and everyone's really friendly because everyone's in the same situation you know like everyone that comes out here to teach is gonna have you know you have that in common with them adventurous pretty adventurous person i'd say you're never dry for conversation right like when you meet yeah. someone abroad it's very easy to get friends with someone and find something in relation and they're mostly the same age as you as well right so same interests yeah oh, right. definitely. yeah right so um what did you really want to get out of teaching abroad like what are you what are you doing this for yeah i really wanted to just like i had never been to asia i really wanted to like get to see the, the like lifestyle there the different culture um i really wanted to, you know, have the experience of being in a school here, which has been great. And I just feel like, I feel like I've learned so much, you know, I've got gotten a lot of traveling. I feel like I've, um, I've just seen so much since I've been here because, you know, once you're out here, it's really easy to travel and yeah, it's just, I've just seen such, you know, from like, the big cities to like the really rural parts of, you know, Thailand and Vietnam, just so yeah. cool. You know, there's some places that are so different. Like I saw like a kid riding a water buffalo to school and it's just like that stuff that you would never see. That's just so shocking and like so cool and just like, yeah, it's just amazing. Has it changed you as a person? Like, do you notice any changes in yourself or? Yeah, I think so for sure. Because when I, well, when I came out here, when I left the States, it was going to be, you know, I was going to be gone for a year, come back and get a job in the States. I was like, I'll come home in April or May. And just since being here, I've already decided I'm going to be, you know, stay abroad at least another year. Wow. Um, maybe more, probably more. But it just made me realize, you know, like how great travel is and how much you learn and like, the just you meet such awesome people, and I'm definitely not ready to go home because it's it's just like the best experience I've ever had. Well, that's awesome to hear because uh, that's basically what what we want. Like, we want people to have a change of perspective and a change of um, like how they see things in the world. Um, yeah. For me, when I went to Thailand for the first time, like I didn't know what the heck I was getting myself in for. Um, didn't really understand much about it. I just wanted to teach English. Um, and, it, and it does change you when you see the way that people are brought up and like the opportunities that they have. And it just makes you think, wow, like uh, my high school is not what other people experience. Like um, yeah. people experience so many different ways of being brought up. Um, 
And that was just an eye opener to me, but it's something that you really wouldn't understand unless you, you went abroad and, and experienced it. Yeah, um, definitely. And I think also like being in Asia has, you know, it really just shows you, like you see all these people, um, you know, that don't, like when I, I traveled through Vietnam and I went to really rural parts of Vietnam and, you know, and like in Myanmar and certain parts of Thailand too. And you see people who, you know, like there's, they have like one TV, no electricity, you know, like, um, yeah. <laughs> so they have home, no air conditioning and they're like just so happy. So it really is just kind of, I feel like it's refreshing to see because, you know, at home it's like every kid's on their smartphone and I, I think the lifestyle's great. And I kind of wish, you know, back at home could be more like it. Yeah, I mean, it's really hard um, when you've not got the latest iPhone. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Uh, and these kids, I mean, it's strange to see, though, that even though, like, in, in poverty-stricken areas, that you can still see a satellite dish. Uh, yeah. They've still, still got cable TV in these places. Yeah, it's always a TV straight out of me um but um so you, you came on our thailand program and then afterwards you went to vietnam um yeah. can you tell um tell us a little bit about like what it was like to train in thailand like what your experience was like there yeah oh gosh it was so much fun um so the training was like I think we've lost her for a moment. Always internet issues to see if she can come back. Check. I'll just message her on Facebook. I'll put a refresh your page. Hopefully she'll refresh her page and come back. Uh, just to give you some introduction to Danielle, so she came on a Thailand program and trained with a lot of people um, on a Thailand program. And then she decided, do you know what? She'd been to Vietnam. She really had her heart set on Vietnam, so she went there. Um, hopefully she will come back in a second <laughs> and tell us something about her training. Um, so I'm not alone here. Um, refresh your page, please. Okay. So... <clears throat> if you're interested in Tefl Heaven, you can uh, go to our website, www.teflheaven.com, and we send people to 10 different countries around the world. Um, it starts with a Tefl course face-to-face -face, and then a guaranteed job. Um, and we send people currently to Europe, Asia, and Latin America. Those in Europe, um, you can go to the Czech Republic or Prague to train um, and then get a guaranteed job if you have a degree in Prague. Um, also, we have a Spain program where you would train for four weeks in the city of Madrid. Um, I think Danielle might be coming back. Yeah, Danielle. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's all right. I just uh, decided to give them a bit of an advert about Devil Heaven while you're away. Um, <laughs> And so the other country, just to finish what I was saying, the other countries that we send people to are... Um, Did I just... Oh, oh we wrong browser. Sorry. You're still there? So uh, I was just saying to the audience, Costa Rica, Argentina, Mexico, um, and Peru, Guatemala, and then China, Vietnam, and Thailand, Spain, and the Czech Republic, are the, the countries you can go to. But back to Danielle, now she's back. Um, you're going to tell us about your Thailand training experience. Yeah, did did everything cut out? Should I just start? So the so we yeah the whole the whole answer about Thailand training cut okay. out. Start from the beginning. Okay. Um. So yeah, like the Thailand training was like some of the best like times I've had in Asia so far. Um. So like I did mine on Smooey, and I was with like what is it fifteen twenty? Like, I can't 20, remember the exact. Twenty three 
other people. Oh, yeah. so 23 other people. And like, it was just so much fun because we were kind of all in the same boat. I don't think anyone had, no one had taught abroad before and everyone was kind of, um, it was their first, most people's, I think, first time in Asia. And we were on, like, Samui was beautiful. We were right by a beach. Um, we had training during the day, which was always, like, we learned a lot, but it was also really fun. Like, it wasn't, like, a normal class where you're bored. Like, it was, we did, like, a lot of games and stuff. And then, yeah. like, every night, we would always, like, go to, there was a place in Samui called Walking Street, and we would all get dinner and go out together. And um, on weekends, like, on weekends, there was no class. So a lot of times on weekends, we would go, like, to, we stayed along Samui, I think. At the end, I took, I went to another island with um, someone from the group. So it was just, it was so much fun. And we got to teach, um, we taught in a school in uh, Koh Samui for, like, our um, teaching experience. And that was a blast. The kids were really cute and sweet, and it was so much fun. And it was – oh, sorry. No, 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 you continue. Oh, I was going to say, and um, I know, you know, I didn't stay in Thailand, but everyone that did stay in Thailand met up. There were some people that were placed together, but a lot of people were placed, you know, in different areas. So they all met up on weekends and traveled together. And now there's three people from my course in Hanoi with me, and they're teaching here now. So it gives you a big community, which is great. That's awesome. So you had some of your friends teach in Thailand and then come and – did you help them get jobs? Yeah. yeah there's um, three people here for my course now. And hey. they're, they're not here long term, but just kind of when the Thai – the school in Thailand, um, the semester ended, so they came here to work for just a few months. Right. So. Well, and then did they go back to Thailand or – no, they're still here. They just got here. Um, one person just got here like two days ago. Another girl got here like a week and a half ago. And then another guy got here a month ago. So who are they? Do I know them? Um, yeah, Ollie and um, Tyler Gibson and um, mm -hmm. Emma Kerber. All right. Wow. That's yeah. Brilliant. I, I, love, I love to hear people crossing countries after they've taught in one country and then they go to another country. Um, and yeah. in Thailand to Vietnam is a very common common transfer. Uh, it's not too far yeah. away. What is it, like uh, $40 flight? Is that? Yeah, yeah, to Bangkok. It's about, like, from Hanoi to Bangkok, like 40, 50 bucks. So it's an easy move. Have you been to Ho Chi Minh City while you've been there? Yeah, um, I have, but, like, for, like, a little over 24 hours. So I don't know too much about it but what i was surprised at is that when i flew from bangkok to ho chi minh city it was a much shorter flight than ho chi minh city to hanoi uh oh like goodness. they are so far apart hanoi and ho chi minh yeah. city because it's Pretty such cool. a long such a long country yeah. it's like 24 hour drive right from hanoi to yeah. ho chi minh. yeah there's like night buses and stuff but Flights are so cheap from Hanoi to Ho Chi Minh, like twenty dollars. So that's crazy. <laughs> and one one concern that our viewers have, um, that everybody has when they want to teach abroad, is the safety. Probably mums and dads have the safety as a concern more than the than the children. But yeah. what can you do? I mean, you can hit the nitty gritty here. You can be honest, as honest yeah. as you want. Like, how safe is it in Vietnam? I honestly feel so, so safe here, like safer than I did like like in where I live back at home. Like it's my like house actually, like our lock's broken on our front door. And so like we don't have a lock on our door and like it doesn't even worry us because it's just like, I've never heard of anything. I've been here six months. I've just never heard of anything like that happening. Like. I have left my phone out like on a dinner table on the street and came back and it was there. So, I mean, I think that was just lucky. That's not common, but like, yeah. I feel extremely safe here. Yeah. I, I, me and my wife had just bought two new iPhones and uh, I put them both in the same pocket, but instead of, instead of putting them side by side, they were on top of each other 
but I didn't oh. know one, one stuck out. And when I went to the cinema, I lost her iPhone. It was uh, crazy. Oh. And uh, we ran back out, and some Thai person had picked it up and, and handed it in. Um, oh. Brand new iPhone. Um, so yes, uh, I mean it is straight. I feel I feel more uh, in danger in Glas Glasgow city centre uh, at midnight uh, than I would in Bangkok at midnight because a lot of people are still out and about. Like yeah, that's the same with Hanoi. But even when it's not, it's just yeah. I've never heard of it. So, so before we finish, do you have any tips or? or tricks, or, or anything that you think that would help someone who's considering teaching English abroad or teaching English in Vietnam? Yeah, so I would say like one thing, because that I was worried about when I was finding a job is like, you know, I didn't want to move somewhere without having a job at first, because I was like, what if I get there and I can't find one? And like, that's not a worry. I would say like, there's so many jobs out there, but like, you're not going to get hired a month before you're going to get hired like a week before they need you. It's like all very last minute. So like, I know that's a worry to some people, but it's like, don't because you will get a job. It's just like that. It's very last minute here. So I, I think got, Thailand is well, right? Yeah. Yeah. Cause the, I don't know why they don't prepare in advance, but it's almost like they work on a crisis basis. Oh no, we yeah. don't have any workers. We better start hiring. Like, it's yeah. a weird culture. We love being prepared in our culture, but they're just, like, work on a needs basis and do it crisis management sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, that's a tip. Um, I would say just, like, I know there's a lot of worries people can have, but I would say just come because it's such a good experience. And, like, I don't know anyone who's ever done this and said they wish they hadn't. Like everyone that I know that's taught about has said that it's like the best experience they've ever had. No one, like I even know, has said like it's all right. Like everyone loves it. So mm. I, I would say just do it for sure. And did, do you have? Did you have any challenges? Like have you have you had any rough time? I don't, I don't want to go too personal yeah. for you, but like no, yeah. I mean, like there's definitely. I mean, living living in a in a city where. They don't speak the same language and the language is so, so different. Like it's always definitely hard. And like in, in Vietnam, this is a little bit different to Thailand. Like in Thailand, most people know English. Like you can communicate and people, you know, most people know a little bit of conversational English. You can get your point across. It's, it's a bit different in Vietnam, like less, um, more Thai people know English than Vietnamese. Yeah. So it is really hard to communicate sometimes and like it can get stressful. But um, I think so you'll just run into I've never had any big problems, but just, you know, if you're like in a rush and trying to get somewhere and, you know, you might be in a cab and you get lost or, you know, yeah. I remember, yeah, I was trying to get a SIM card for my phone and like it took me hours because no one understood. But, <laughs> you know, after, you know, now I know where to go. It was kind of when I first started. But I think that's kind of anywhere. There's going to be challenges, obviously, because it's so different. And it's really hard to learn the language, I think, because it's really tonal. Yeah. So. Um, I mean, I speak, I speak a bit of Thai. Um, I would say I'm lower intermediate. I can control conversations, but don't let them control it because I'm just lost. But when I went, I've been to Vietnam quite a number of times, and it is just, it's like, Chinese. <laughs> well, it's not Chinese, obviously, it's Vietnamese, but like it, it, it's very, very difficult. With someone with, a, I can speak a tonal language, and I and I think their language is so different. So difficult. Yeah, it's really, it's really hard just because, yeah, if you just say one thing off, like if you don't inflect your voice at a certain point, it means something totally different. And like you think you're saying, like when I was trying to get my SIM card, I just kept saying like SIM and no one understood me. And then someone else said like SIM, just like, oh, I couldn't even tell the difference. And then everyone was like, oh, okay. It's like I'm <laughs> saying the same thing. But That's awesome, Danielle. Really appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to 
to chat to us. And uh, and I hear you're you're seeking a job in Prague now. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking about moving there for the school year at the end of August. Wow. Uh, well, that'll be completely different and um, probably a lot easier and you can get lots of cheese there that you want to in Vietnam. And, uh, yeah. yeah, that'll be awesome. Well, we might try and catch up with you again in a year's time if you do actually uh, end up in Prague. That'd be great to get a recap. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Well, thank you so much for coming to this Facebook Live. It's my second uh, so far, and uh, I've really enjoyed you being a guest. Um, and we thank you so much. And uh, we haven't had any questions from anyone, um, but we have had some watchers today, but I'm sure a lot of people can watch this video afterwards as well. So Cool. Well, thank you so much. Great. Thanks, Danielle. And what you got planned for today? What's, what's on the horizon? Um... I work at five. I think I'm going to go to the pool. It's nice out. Um, yeah. Nice. Pool day today. <laughs> Excellent. Well, enjoy the rest of your day. I hope it's nice and relaxing, and then obviously you'll work. Um, yeah. And yeah, I'll catch up with you uh, later. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Right. Thanks, Danielle. See you later. Bye.